Okay, Gabriel Selassie just walked past me there, getting ready for the start of the men's elite race. That's over 10.34. Perhaps the last time we'll see him uh, on British roads, getting close to the end of his career. He spoke to Phil Jones yesterday. So you've won here the last three years. You've won four in all. What are the chances of making that five this time? Why not? Uh, I came here, you know, just to do something. Of course, you know, just uh, uh, every race is not easy. I will try my best, you know, just uh, Sunday, and uh, it's going to be not easy, but why not? Now, this time last year, we were still talking about your Olympic dream for London 2012. Obviously, that's since it changed. It didn't uh, work. <laughs> didn't work out quite. Yeah. Um, has the reality of that sunk in for you now? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, you know, it was my wish, you know, just to to take part in you know, this Olympics. I've been, you know, just uh, of the last uh, four Olympics, but this is my my last chance, um, plus uh, it's London, but uh, it's not easy. Athlete like me, you know, just to come here and only watching. What can I do? Uh, <laughs> I, I did, you know, just all my effort, uh, finally didn't work. Well, you did your very, very best, you're right. And the thing is, you inspired so many other athletes in Ethiopia, and you have for years, and now you have an abundance of world-class talent that have come and been inspired by you. Well, of course, it's sport. You have to, you have to accept uh, the youngsters. I mean, of course, it's just like, uh, if you look engine, can you drive uh, uh, the engine from uh, 2000, uh, with the engine 2012? It's a different engine, more faster, more stronger, and uh, new technology, and the same, a human being also the same. And, uh, but at least uh, I'm trying to upgrade myself uh, with <laughs> young He's a great character, and he's always a very welcome face here in Great Britain. He's a big star of athletics around the world, but we love him here, and it's great to see him in Manchester. Again, will it be for the last time? Well, we don't know, we'll see. He is the big star, but one or two other great names in there. Patrick Macau, the world record holder for the marathon. Kebeda, former winner of the London Marathon. Abshero, the man who ran so fast in the Dubai Marathon this year, will be going to the Olympics for Ethiopia. John Kelly, Commonwealth champion. Just some of the names. Some new names, and this is Ayele Abshero, who has been selected after that great run in Dubai earlier on in the year, in January. And the Ethiopians tend to just go with who ran the fastest, and that's why he's in the team, and it's why this man is not in the team. And a lot of people think that could be a mistake. Former London Marathon champion, didn't run well enough in this year's race to push himself in terms of uh, Ethiopian selection. And neither did this man, will not be going for the Kenyans. Can you believe that? He's the world record holder. Again, the performance in London wasn't one which uh, gave him the opportunity to get selected. And I think we're all disappointed we won't be seeing him at the Olympic Games either. But at the age of 39, he's got plenty to look back on. Just listen to the reception for the great Haile Gebri Selassie. Well, the clock counting down. And away they go. The Buba Great Manchester run. Underway. The elite athletes at the front of the field. And then right behind them, you can see the mass ranks of... 40,000 others in a series of waves right throughout the morning will get their chance to join the greats on the streets of this great city. As we go back to the men's race, and there is one of the very, very best. The man next to him, as you said uh, in the introduction, Steve Cabetta, it, it's hard to believe that he's not going to the Olympics. Staggering. Well, I'll tell you why a lot of people think he would have been a good selection is because the London course of the Olympics is quite a twisty, turny course. It's four laps, or three big laps, and a one smaller lap, and it's around the embankment area, and there's a lot of twists and turns, and he's run London before, and he's, his sort of style, um, the, the thinking is it's, it suits his style. And then you've got someone like uh, Abshero, who's still a little bit untested and tried, and yes, he's got a fast time in Dubai, but there have been a few other athletes this year who ran well in Dubai and have not really translated that into other performances, so... I'm really interested to see how Abshero comes up against Kibeda. Of course, Haile is the man we're all looking at. Um, Macau working hard to get on the back of that group there because these three have set off pretty quickly, as you'd expect. So Macau just making sure they don't get away. So, yeah, these two, uh, Abshero out of this group, the only one who's going to be running in London, and all four of them as this year set off.
you know, a turn of the year they would have all been hoping that they were going to have the chance to be competing at the Olympic Games. So two kilometres, 8.05, that's a good strong start, uh, sorry, two kilometres, three kilometres in 8.05, it would be slow if it was two, wouldn't it, that'd be about my pace. Um, 8.05, so that's uh, pretty swift, isn't it, but a good start from uh, these four. A familiar figure at the front of the men's elite race, and of course the masses are on their way too, but some way back from Harley Gabri Selassie, who really has pushed on now. Remarkable man, a remarkable career as well. Just got to remind yourself that he is 39 years old now, and he's well, won. Just look at this, 13.31 through five kilometers. That is super fast from Gabri Selassie. The course record is actually held by Mika Kogo, the Kenyan who uh, did that five years ago, 27-21, so well inside schedule, and that's why he has the lead, that's why even those great athletes behind him, including the world record holder for the marathon, the man who's going to represent Ethiopia in the marathon, and Kibeda, former London champion, struggling. This man is in great shape. Look at that, these three, I mean, Paul, these three guys are the three, three of the best runners in the world, and they just cannot live with it. Well, you talked about Haile Gabrielassie's range of racing. Even if he was running in a 1,500-metre race, we know what sort of finishing speed he's got. 5,000, 10,000 metres, half marathons, and, of course, the former world record holder for the marathon. But that is the, the chasing group there. Kabeda, the front runner of that chasing group, and the world record holder for the marathon, Patrick Macau, who, of course, broke Gabrielassie's record. Gabri Selassie at the moment is showing them all a clean pair of heels and uh, I think his lead may be just increasing a little bit. He knows this The question course. now is, can he maintain this through to the finish? He keeps looking behind at the moment. There's a little bit of a, there's a, bit of a tough section through here. There's, it's a pretty flat course, to be honest, but if anything, this is uh, maybe the hardest kilometre or so, and then he'll uh, get a little downhill section to head back. But that's a big lead. He's still running strong. Very fast first five kilometres. Let's see what he can do. This is great to see. Well, as you say, this is a remarkable run from a remarkable man. He is working hard. Let's make no mistake about it. He's uh, run away at the moment from certainly three of the very best distance runners in the world. I think the gap we saw about a kilometre ago has been increased. But Harley is working hard. But let's face it, he knows this course better than anybody. And he's been in this position four times in the past as he heads towards home. There's Kibeda in second place, the diminutive little fella from Ethiopia, teammate, of course, of Haile. Just looking forward, Haile would not want to turn up, either for, for any of his races, but certainly for the London Olympics, in anything worse than 100% shape. He wouldn't just go along for the ride. I think, I think the problem, Paul, is exactly that. I mean, Haile can do the qualifying time, of course he can. I think what he'll be thinking of is, is, could I really go to the Olympics and be competitive on the last lap? The 10,000 metres, you remember what happened in the World Championships last year. Is he going to be, uh, you know, Jaylan, Mo Farah, Bekele, you know, can he kick, can he run a 54 last lap? I think that's the thing which is probably missing in his armoury. He used to be able to do that, he was the king of doing that. And he's 15 seconds ahead of Afshera, Kabeda and uh, Patrick Macau. Well, marathon record holder has dropped off that group, the chasing group of two athletes. So is it all over bar the shouting? Well, if Gabriel Selassie's got anything to do with it, you have to say at this stage, with two kilometers to go, yes. Seems has been for so long, has been left clear for Haile Gabriel Selassie. They're chasing, but that's a big gap. Well, that overhead shot certainly gives you a clear indication as to the sort of pace that Hailey is running at the moment. The two outriders there, the cyclists, they're really having to push on the motorbike, the camera bike just in front of him. As Gabri Selassie looks behind him once more, I don't think I've ever seen him look back so often, but he knows he's got two world-class athletes behind him. He's had a great career, but he's raced some great athletes as well during his career. He's had to be you know, very, very good. And it wasn't until, of course, Bekele came along and started to challenge him. And I think when it's your own teammate as well, when it's somebody from your own country, that, um, that uh, adds a, a different dimension to it. And it, it's been great, though, I think, that he's managed to maintain 
this level of ability and enthusiasm. You know, when you've had such a successful career over the years, to maintain the freshness, to maintain the hunger, to maintain the desire to do the training required to still compete at this level is, is admirable. Hasn't He's had a few injuries, not too many over the years, looked after himself so well. He is, in all intents and purposes, the king of Ethiopia as well. You know, he's got all sorts of business interests there. And, uh, well, if he ever wants to do anything outside of the athletics world, he'd be uh, more than capable of doing that. One last look behind. He's into the last lap, effectively. The bell would have sounded were this on the track. He has slowed. But the race was won in the early stages when he made the first four or five kilometers so quick. And he can enjoy the plaudits of the crowd once more. They love to see him here in Manchester. He's almost one of ours now. He gets great support around the world wherever he goes. Ethiopian contingent come out in whatever city he's in. But probably the most popular distance runner there's ever been. Highly Gebri Selassie. The grimace turns to a smile again. The waves and the adulation for perhaps the greatest ever. Is it the last time we'll see him? I hope not, but if it is, it's been another great victory for the great little man. Where he belongs at the front, on top, number one. Teammates Kebeda and Abshero having their own little race there, and Kebeda will be quite pleased to have just pipped the man who's been selected ahead of him for the Olympic Games. But there was nothing they could do about their hero today. No embarrassment getting beaten by him, though, is there? And Stephen Kipritic just coming through to get ahead of uh, Patrick Macau, who's a little bit out of sorts, Macau now, and um, the world record holder there. A very disappointing performance in London. His Olympic dream taken away from him. Castellejo and Sergei Lebed, too. Well, certainly Lebed, a very familiar man here in Manchester. Nine times European cross country champion. <laughs> That's still pretty solid. Run. So highly with the Ethiopian scarf around his neck. Can now enjoy. Well, that road is going to be full for the next couple of hours at least. And it was clear a little while ago for Haile Gabriel Selassie to storm through to a winning time of 27.38, which uh, matches just, well, a second quicker than he ran three, four years ago. He's won this last four years now, and that's uh, as quick as he's run since uh, three years ago. Kebeda, second place, just a second ahead of his teammate Abshero, and it was uh, Stephen Kipritich who uh, just beat his teammate, Patrick McCow, fourth and fifth. Yeah, thanks, Paul Harley, alongside me. Harley, uh, a fantastic run. You must be delighted with that. Yeah, it's wonderful today. I, I'm so happy. Well, actually, I didn't expect, you know, just to run that fast because of... Uh, I had a, a little bit doubt, you know, yesterday because of the weather. But the weather today, as you see, you know, fantastic, and the atmosphere as well. Oh, great, great today. Yeah, well, they love seeing you here. Um, all sort of questions about whether or not you're going to retire or not. After that performance, London 2012 and the 10,000 metres, very much a possibility? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking now. Next week uh, I have to run Henglo to be top three. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll be in London. Well, we hope you will be. You're watching on television all the shots from Land's End and from Cold Rose of the Olympic torch being lit, and that must make you want to be in London. Sure, I don't want to miss you know, this game because it's London. I want, I mean, definitely not just, even not, I, not to compete, I have to be here, but I'll try to be in the, in the team. And maybe even a possibility if you're running with the torch, perhaps? Yeah, that will be another thing, you know, on the 16th of uh, June, uh, I've been in uh, Newcastle with Brandon Foster and just to, to bring the torch. Look, Harley, it's always fantastic to see you. A brilliant run, and we really hope to see you in London. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay. So, 67 days to go until the opening ceremony of the London...